So I am here with Robbie Minjay. I am trying to get some new things going on with the uh, YouTube channel for the Sacred Rights Tattoo, and um, we're going to do an artist interview again. I've done a few of these before when um, we had previous artists here and we got a lot of love from it, so I figured I'd pick it back up with the new artists that we have and go from there. So say hello, Robbie. Hi, I'm Robbie. So we, we came up with a list of, of questions, so we're going to be looking at our phones quite a bit, but um, this, this interview today being the first one is going to be just some basic questions, and as we progress in this, I'm going to have you guys submit questions for us to ask our artists. Uh, the first question that we have here is, what made you want to be a tattoo artist? Um... I'm going to say the unpopular thing that everybody doesn't want you to say and that it's cool. Like that was like my dream job. Like I was like, you know, everybody that I ever met that tattooed, like they were just cool people like that I related to. Not that they were like rock stars, but like they listened to the same music as me, you know, partied. Like when I was a kid, I was like, oh, that's cool. And then the more that I grew up, I was just like, man, I get to be paid to be creative. And that was my jam. So. That's why. I so, didn't. so you didn't come across any rock star tattoo artist? Oh, I came across a whole <laughs> bunch of them, like the entire time. Like that was all I knew, and that's why, like, as I grew up, I was like, I don't want that mentality because I saw the repercussions of the way that they acted early on. Right. And how long have you been <clears throat> tattooing now? Uh, I've been tattooing since May, so eleven months. How long did it take you to find a, an apprenticeship? Uh, I actively searched for an apprenticeship for about a year. I think it was about a year, year and a half. And how many no's did you get? So many no's. Like, three no's. That's not even that many. Yeah. But, like... Um, were they just gentle no's, or were they just, like, don't got, waste your time, kid? <laughs> I got uh, a laugh in the face, a hell no, and a maybe give me five grand. And then, I, I mean, clearly, then I got a yes. Right. Which was better than... Than spending all, five grand? Than, than spending five grand. Um, what was the hardest thing about your apprenticeship? I think the hardest part was balancing real life with doing, you know, doing the apprenticeship part. Like I had a full-time job while I was doing my apprenticeship. So I think that was probably, you got to explain that a little bit more. Okay. So what I did was I woke up every day at, uh, what was it? 4:30 in the morning. And I went to work at 5:30. worked till two. And then from two from uh, at two, I left and then three to 10 or nine, depending on how late we were. And then I would clean the shop. I would go home, go to bed, wake up, do it over again. And you did that for how long? Uh, for eight months. About eight months. And that was the hardest thing about your apprenticeship? I think so. What was the best part of your apprenticeship? The best part was the progression, like the everyday progression. Not not only just like since I started tattooing, but just like learning new stuff every day and watching other artists, like what they're doing and then combining that with what I thought I knew about tattooing. And would you say that being in a shop where there are eight tattoo artists helped you or, or hurt you? I would say it helped me and it also like it, it helped me. It didn't hurt me at all. I would say that like having eight different people and eight different outlooks on what tattooing was really made me kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, we say all the time in here that it takes a village to raise an idiot. So yeah, and I know. am an idiot. <laughs> so you've been, you've been with us now since February of last year. So it's been over a year. You've been tattooing for 11 months, um, which is really fast for an apprentice, but we, we don't have a bullshit approach to apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. Um, being that you've seen what other apprentices go through in other studios and you know what people that you respect as an artist have gone through in their apprenticeships with your apprenticeship situation and in a tra traditional apprenticeship process what is your view on that because what you went through and what normal people go through like how how would you i went through uh with my apprenticeship i actually caught some flack from other artists at other studios which is fine they're allowed to have their views i just think that the the approach that we took where it's like you're not paying me i like you as a person i like your art i want you to be here is a way better approach than Oh, screw this kid. Give me money. And if you make it, I'm going to beat you up and hopefully you leave so I don't have to have you around. Like, you know what I mean? I think that I think the old school method of having an apprenticeship is like just old, it's an old school approach. You know what I mean? It's a different time and different era of tattooing. Um, being that I've done I've done paid for non paid for apprenticeships. Normally, that's based off someone's ability to, to create art as well as their mm -hmm. their want because you get people that come in that only want it because it's a cool job and you get people that come in that like live breathe. Yeah, will die. Tattoo. Well, like, that's all I wanted. And, and I could see that yeah. when you came in, which is why we gave you the apprenticeship. But you have, you know, the only thing that you had to do during your apprenticeship was clean the shop, 
answer the phones. Yeah. You know, we didn't make you pay for your apprenticeship and we didn't uh, we didn't beat on you and we didn't make you scrub shit off the walls or, yeah. you know, no. come pick us up from the bar at 3 a.m. and all the shit that goes on with other apprenticeships. Um, but they, they say that, you know, people feel like they that you need to go through that because it's like a hazing process that all the other old schoolers went through. And, like, I disagree with it. I don't think that it's going to make you a better tattoo artist and it's not going to breed a loyalty to the people who are teaching you if you're being treated like shit i agree i think that i mean work them really hard and that in in the sense that like you're gonna have them around yeah you know what i mean don't beat them up and hope they leave well and with your apprenticeship too it got to the point where you were getting burnt out doing both jobs and we let you keep 100 percent of what you made yeah. for like four months while you were and that was super awesome like that that's the reason why i was able to like actually sleep and then really indulge myself right. in tattooing so that you think that that made your craft better do you think that oh, that sped up your apprenticeship hell at all? yeah dude yeah yeah because then i was then that was all i could focus on do you think that would be beneficial to future apprentices or do you think that that's something that should be held for like special occasions i don't know i think that i mean it was super helpful for me i mean if you find somebody else in the same situation then i would i would yeah. totally do it well we paid peter too yeah. during his apprenticeship and he's been peter's, here for three years now peter's never leaving who's your top three favorite artists and why i didn't want to do this question <laughs> um top three number three i changed it from yesterday when did we you talked. and who is it mike chambers <laughs> you only did that so you had a tradition i did guy, i had fucker. to add one um mike chambers only only bait well he's a fucking awesome artist but uh because he does solid color solid lines bold tattooing because he's badass i like him his stuff and then uh number two is uh, a guy I just found out about like a week or two ago. Uh, his name's Stu Pagden. He does like really crazy uh, Japanese style work. It's really rad. And uh, number one is Jeff Bugwe because I felt like he has a whole lot of resources on his websites and he like really gives back to tattooing on top of being like a really badass tattooer. Jeff Bugwe is one of those people who were was a painter mm -hmm. and artist that picked up a machine with no skill like no apprenticeship and yeah. was able to just run with it. And he wasn't very good. He'll tell you the first four years of his career, yeah. he was garbage. And now he's, you know, a world-class tattooer. He and was, unless uh, you're getting large scale work, you can't even get in with him. Yeah. He was posted. Uh, I watched a seminar with him and I mean, I'm not going to go in detail about it, but he was, uh, he was saying like, look at this line where, and he was like zooming in on his shit. He's like, that sucks. He's yeah. like, I suck here. <laughs> it was great. I like that. Machines, needles, and inks. What do you use? Um, I use a Cheyenne Thunder, a Swash Drive Gen 8, and a inkjecta and i just bought a workhorse iron shader that i've used once so far needles uh black claw or kingpin yeah yeah um and you say you say kingpin for their needles on bars not their slot locks yeah dude don't ever buy slot locks i hope that doesn't get me in any trouble <laughs> it, but it's... the other needles on bars kick ass their slot locks are not my jam uh <laughs> true tubes true tubes only yeah like that's all i really care about t-techs are great for the price but i would rather use true tubes and what about inks? Um, I've been using a smorgasbord of inks, uh, Intens, Eternal. What would you say the the majority of your inks are? Oh, I have majority of Eternal. Uh, the more the more Intens inks that I get, and uh, I don't know, just random stuff. Five year goal. I want to win an award, but that's not like on the top tier of my stuff. I want to do like, yeah, I think just win an award, and then ten years is just celebrate ten years of tattooing. I don't really have like any crazy astronomical goals you just for want myself. A tattoo. I just want a tattoo. Yeah, that's it. That's a good outlook to have, dude. It's um, you know, obviously winning an award isn't a big deal. That's um, that's a very big deal. There's mm -hmm. people that go their entire career that never try to do anything like that. It took me years before I finally got one. And there's a <clears throat> there's like a vindication that comes from it. It's like aha 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 like I yeah. did it, you know, but at the same time like it's three people, four people, five people that like your shit more than somebody else's that day and it, you yeah. know, you can't really base your, it's like getting likes on Instagram. We were also talking about it the other day. It's like goals are dumb because then you just pass them up and then you're like, oh shit, like I got to reach for something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so that's why I just, I try not to put anything like monumental on my list because then when it happens, I'm not like, mm, I'm just like, oh, cool. Regular <laughs> day at the office. Uh, do you think that you're going to get into a position where you ever want to be a shop owner or do you just want to tattoo forever? Um, the more that I deal, like not deal with, the more that I hear what, what you deal with, the less I want to be a shop owner. Uh, but I think that, I mean, you can't tattoo forever. So that's definitely like something I would do when I can't tattoo anymore. Um, being that you 
you, you've been like a, a huge help to me into the shop when I'm not around and when I go on vacations and things like that. So you do get a little more of an insight of what I go through. Um, what do you think about people who have been tattooing for less than five or 10 years that open a shop or people that open a shop and think that they can just open their doors and, and be rich? I think that there's a fine line between being like a really good tattooer and then being like, oh, I'm a really good tattooer. So I'm going to open up my own shop and do my own thing. Like, no, dude, like there's a lot of business that goes behind that. And I feel like when you're in a shop for 10 years, I mean, if you're a tattooer, that's a 10 year veteran, you know how shit is ran. You know what I mean? You can't right. just like go on Craigslist, find storage spare, or find space and then open up and whatever. Like for me, like I would never open up a shop unless I'm like 15 years in because then I, then I have my clientele and all this jazz and then I can do that. But in reality, like I don't, I don't think that I would ever actually do it though. No, no, I don't think so. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, I'm going to be doing more interviews. I'd like to get a couple of our other guys in here and have their opinions and thoughts. Probably use some, some of the same questions. Some of the other ones, if you guys have any questions, uh, put them in the comments and we will ask them on the uh, next artist interview. Sorry. Dumbass. This whole time I was like, what am I going to do with my arms? <laughs> <laughs>